let me first check with you. What do you know about circulatory systems in general? Maybe just share two things that you know. And then share one thing that you would like to know. So two things that you already know, whether you have covered this topic in school or you have not, it is still fine to share what you already know. And then to just share one thing that you would be interested to find out. And we'll see if I can try to cover that one curious thing. Okay, so I do see that there's a, a confusion between parts of the respiratory system. So is the blood linked to the lungs? To a certain extent, they are closely associated at some point in the lungs, but we'll talk about that only much later. And I first need to apologize because it seems that there's something wrong with my video function today. So you can just listen to my mesmerizing voice and we can still try to see if you can learn without looking at my face today, all right? But if it really bothers you and you really want to see my funny face, then I'll try to see what I can do. Okay, but meanwhile, this will be some questions that we'll try to be able, we should be able to answer by the end of this lesson. So these are adapted from PSLE a couple of years back. Don't worry, you can just read through them and then towards the end of the lesson, after we have covered some of these concepts, then we'll be able to answer them. Easy as pie. Okay, so don't panic now if you still don't know these answers yet. By the end of the lesson, we should have a better idea. Okay, so today's lesson, we're going to understand the brief functions of the skeletal as well as the muscular systems in human. And yes, even though this topic is about the circulatory system, the fact is that we will still need to know what are some of the other human systems in our body and at least have a brief understanding of how they work. Okay, we'll also be understanding the role of the circulatory system in transporting materials around the body and identify the organs that make up the human circulatory system. For example, are the lungs part of the human circulatory system? All right. And lastly, to describe the functions of each organ in the human circulatory systems. Okay, so let's take a look at some human body systems. Basically, if you can remember what we've covered very, very early on in the topic of cells, we know that many cells come together to form a tissue. A few tissues come together to form an organ. And a few organs work together in a similar way to form an organ system. So this is the system that we're talking about. All right, so there are the, there's the reproductive system, there's the digestive system, the circulatory system, as well as the respiratory system. And for these four systems, you will be expected to know them in sufficient detail. Okay, which means that you must be able to state the different organs and the functions of each of these organs. However, other than these four systems, we also have the muscular system as well as the skeletal system. For these, you do not need to know very much. You don't need to know in detail, but you need to roughly know what is its role in the whole functioning of the human body. Okay, but other than these two groups of human body systems, can anybody else think of any other systems that is not mentioned? Can you type in the chat box? Are you aware of any other system other than what I've mentioned so far and what is shown on screen? Let's see. Very good. Nervous system. Well done. Any more? Mm -mm. Now we're talking about the COVID. What fights the COVID? They always say you must take vitamin C. Very good. Immune system. Any other systems that you can think of? I'll give you one keyword, okay? Hormones. Hormones is part of the... This is very difficult. If somebody can give me that word, I'll be really impressed. It starts with E and ends with E. Mm -mm -mm. Nope. That starts with H and ends with M. Hormones. Which system do hormones belong to? Starts with E and ends with E. Isaac says, I know. E, Ashley, no. I know that starts with E and ends with E, but not the E system. It's the endocrine system. Okay, don't worry. But it shows that, you know, we are, there's so much more about the human body. So there's the urinary system. Or we can call this the excretory system. There's the nervous system, the lymphatic system, the endocrine system, the immune system, blah, 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 blah. All right. And obviously, we don't have time to cover all of these systems. But if you want to study to be a doctor, 
then yes, you will be able to, in fact, you will, you will be forced to study all these human systems in detail. But for us at this level, we're only going to be looking at the four in detail and the muscular and skeletal very, very briefly. Okay, so what's the skeletal system? Basically, it's to support the body. I know it looks creepy, but it's not Halloween, I assure you. At least not yet. So, skeletal system is important because it gives your body its sh your shape and it supports many of your organs as well as your tissues and allows you to stand upright. Okay, so it basically protects many important organs. For example, the skull protects your brain, assuming we have one. The ribs protect our heart and our lungs. The skeletal system is also very important because it works together with your muscular system in order to bring about movement. So our muscles cannot move by themselves because our muscles are actually attached to bones at certain points. So the skeletal system works in tandem with the muscular system. Okay, and what is the muscular system? Muscular system, like the name suggests, is made up of muscles. Okay, so next one, we're looking at the muscular system. The muscular system is made up of muscles. For example, our biceps and our triceps. When one contracts, usually the other will relax. So these two words are important. Okay, when we talk about the muscular system, we are saying that muscles contract and muscles relax. We don't say that the muscles expand or shorten. We say that, we say that muscles either relax or they contract. So when the muscles shorten, we say that they contract. If the muscles lengthen, then they relax. So if you take a look, when the arm is moving upwards, you'll notice that the biceps, which are brighter red, actually get oh, The biceps actually shorten when you're pulling your arm up. So that is when your biceps are contracting. When you are re extending your arm, then your biceps will actually relax. Okay? And because biceps and triceps are what we call antagonistic muscles. Antagonistic muscles. Which means that when the biceps contract, the triceps will relax. When the triceps contract, the biceps will relax. So the biceps and the triceps are examples of antagonistic muscles. Don't worry. I'm just introducing you to really scientific terms because I want to show off that I'm very clever so that you can also go to your parents and show off that you are very clever. Okay? So muscles are the only tissues that can actually contract and relax to bring about movement. But these muscles need to be actually attached to certain body parts, then they can move these body parts. Okay, for example, the heart is a muscle. The heart is actually what we call a cardiac muscle. And they beat continuously throughout your lifetime. More than 2 billion times, if you live up to about 70 years old. Okay, We also have the digestive system. Digestive system basically is also surrounded by muscles all the way from the gullet, down your stomach, small intestine, large intestine, all the way to your rectum. It's made up of muscles. Without these muscles, food cannot be pushed down the digestive tract in a single direction. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what happens when you try to drink water upside down. Have you tried drinking water upside down? Do you think you can drink water upside down? <laughs> what happens if you try to drink water upside down? You swallow, then the water comes out from your nose, is it? <laughs> Maybe you should try. Okay, so let's see what happens. With the assist of muscles in our digestive system, we can actually train more tops like that. Ready, everyone? Okay. Here we go. This is what you want to see. It can be done. Upside down. Wow. By the world. Oh, my Do you realize the beard didn't come out from his nose? Yeah, you can see it on YouTube. You can see it's a world archivist. Much more.
right? So the beer didn't come out from his nose. So you can drink stuff upside down. You can eat food upside down. And the main reason is because we have muscles in our gullet that push food down towards our stomach and all the way through until the food by right reaches the rectum. Okay, but yeah. Don't, you can try this at home, but not with beer. <laughs>